Hi, I'm David Olsebrook. I'm with the Metro Marine Modelers. We sail our radio control sailboats here in Toronto at the sailing pond at Humber Park East, and I hope that you'll come and sail with us. Today what I want to show you is very quickly, how do you set the sails on a soling one meter sailboat? If you use this method, you should be able to very quickly set up your sails to race in any condition. The first thing that you do, once you've got your rig on and you make sure that the mast is vertical and doesn't lean to one side or the other, um, and everything is attached, the radio's on, is you take the boat in the cradle and you lay it over so that it heals. And you line up the cradle so that the sailboat is on a close hauled course. The reason for laying it over so that it heals is in light air, the, the gravity will fill the sails out for you and you don't rely on the wind to do it. Um, and you set it on the close hauled course because that's the critical course that you're tuning for. That's the most important leg of any sailboat race is the windward leg and that's where you need the most performance out of your sails. So having done this, what are we trying to accomplish when we set up the sails? The most important thing is to get the leech of the sails, which is the, the trailing surface of the sail, both sails, parallel to the center line of the boat. Center line of the boat you can see by looking down the backstay across the mast, that's the center line of the boat. So how do you do that? You tighten the, the jib sheet so that it pulls the club up more or less as much as it will go. And you tighten the outhaul, which reduces the pocket and flattens out this angle. So I'm just going to pull on the outhaul of the boat to show you the effect on the angle of the leech of the mainsail. You can see as I tighten the outhaul, back of the sail comes flat and it becomes in the same plane as the center plane of the boat. And you judge it by standing back behind your boat and looking to see whether you've successfully got the leech lined up with the center line of the boat. It doesn't have to be on the center line of the boat, it has to be parallel to the center line of the boat. If you have it too open, if it's not all the way up to the parallel to the center line of the boat, you're not going to point as high as you want and you won't go as fast as you want because it will spill air. If you have it pointed too high, if it's hooked up and it crosses the line, the parallel to the center line of the boat, then you'll point very high but you'll be slow. So we've made those adjustments for the mainsail. The outhaul only controls the shape of about the bottom third of the mainsail. The upper third, you want essentially the same thing. You want the leech to be parallel to the center line of the boat, and you adjust that by tightening and loosening the boom vane and the tension in the top of the sail and try to get the same effect, try to get the top of the sail in parallel to the center line of the boat. I'm tightening it in and I'm easing it off so you can see that the top of the sail twists open and falls off as you ease the boom vane. Now, to some extent it's held in place by the, by the main sheet, so I've eased the sheet a little bit using the radio. So you can see what happens when you ease your sheets as well. That's one reason why you leave the radio on while you're tuning. It helps see which is causing what effect. And you want your boom vang to be easily adjustable so you can make a quick adjustment as conditions change uh, over the course of the day. And once again, you make it your decision. Have you done this properly by standing a couple of meters behind your boat and looking down the center line? And you do the same thing for the jib. There is a, a sort of unique feature on the soling, which is that the angle, uh, the, uh, the curvature of the jib in this dimension, if you look at my hand going up and down the sail, the degree to which this top of the sail opens up is controlled by the backstay. When you tighten the backstay, it pulls up on the forestay and pulls down on the leech of the sail. And what you want is you want the distance between the mainsail and the jib to be a nice even curve from the top to the bottom. So you want the same opening space all the way up and down and once again you judge that from the same place. Standing behind your boat you adjust your backstay so that you can see the curve is what you want it to be. And I'll turn the boat around so you can get a look at it here. As you pull in the mainsail, as you pull in the backstay rather, the top of the jib closes up. As you open the backstay, backstay the top of the jib opens out. And when you've put the boat on the water and it's sailing, if you see the top opening out, you'll, you'll want to bring in the backstay a little bit, tighten up the backstay a little bit. And a little bit of backstay adjustment goes a long way. So the next thing that you want to know is how far out from the, 
from the center line of the boat does the jib club go? And the answer is not a dimension. The answer is a function of when the sails luff. What you want, the, you want it to be set so that when you're sailing along and you turn up towards the wind, both sails luff at the same time. If the jib luffs first, the club is too far out. If the jib luffs after the mainsail, the club is too tight in. And it's that simple. And generally, once you've done your little trick about lining up the leech of the sails, you'll find the sails will luff evenly from top to bottom. So as you head up into the wind, the top of the sail will start to flutter at the same time as the bottom of the sail. So that one simple adjustment, lining up the back, the leech of the sails with the parallel to the center line of the boat, will make a tremendous difference to getting you ready to sail and ready to race right away. The other main adjustment that you need to make every time you sail is moving the mast backwards and forwards. As the wind increases, you move the mast forward. Otherwise, what happens is the boat tries to round up and head into the wind by itself. If you have to fight the boat with the rudder, that's very slow. Anytime you have to use the rudder, it's a big break. You're slowing the boat down. So you'll very quickly get in the habit of realizing that after it's about six knots of wind, you're going to put the mast in the forward hole and you're going to put the jib club in the forward eye on the boat and lower than that wind speed, you'll shift them back aft. And uh, one thing you need to be aware of is that some of the adjustments you make on the sailboat throw others, other things out of adjustment. When you move the mast forward and back, for example, when you ease or tighten the backstay, you change the angle of the mast, which might require you to, to re reset the sheet length. The sheets might become either too short or too long. So once you've been through the boat, you've set everything up the way you want it, go back through it again because the last thing you adjusted may have thrown off the first things you adjusted. And the other thing I wanted to point out to you is as you use the outhaul on either sail to adjust the, uh, the shape of the leech, the depth of the draft pretty much gets adjusted automatically. So you don't have to worry about rules of thumb about how many fingers and knuckles and, and uh, batteries you can put in, in the space between the boom and the sail. It's taken care of when you adjust the leech. So we'll take the boat to the water and see how it does. So as we look at the boat from behind, we can try to determine if the leech of the sail is on the center line of the boat. It looks like it might be hooked up a little bit to windward. As the breeze fills in, the leech of the sail flattens out by itself. And we'll tack and watch the head sail, watch the luff of the both sails to see if they break evenly and if the two sails break at the same time. And it looks like they pretty much do. And the consequence of having the mast in the right place and the sails set up the way I've shown you is that the boat will sail without the need to touch the rudder in a straight line. And that is fast, because any time you touch the rudder, you've slowed your boat down. And uh, that's all there is to it. See you at the pond.